Hello guys and welcome to another chemistry class and in this class we're going to be looking at uh, very uh, obviously separation techniques and uh, the determination of the purity of a substance that is just a side thing right so these are the separation techniques we're going to be looking at we're going to be looking at uh, what they are and then of course we are going to explain to you uh, several ways they can come out in examinations it is very important and pertinent that you watch this video to the end a lot of you will watch two minutes of a video that is over 30 minutes and then you think you have known everything about the video well that is your choice that's your choice basically but make sure please that you learn everything about this separation techniques because you do not know where jump is set that question from in separation techniques right so uh, we have said before now that um, the constituent of mistrust can be separated by physical means in the last class if you have not watched that class please go and watch it on element compounds and mixture look for it in this channel and watch it right so i'll say the constituent of mixtures can be separated by physical means and that is why we are discussing about separation techniques what are those ways we can separate mixtures right so uh do not forget of course that this class is brought to you by the old tourist schools jump app old tourist schools jump application is the best cbt practice app available out there it has all the jam past questions under the UTME practice session. UTME practice. You know, you don't write jam, you write UTME. So a lot of you make the misconception. Ah, my jam exam is UTME you are writing. Well, Joe, well, you could say jam though, because jam is the body that conducts the exam, but the exam you're writing is UTME. So under the UTME practice is where you find all the past questions on the app up to date right so of course it has all the past questions for all subjects for all subjects it also has likely questions that will come out in your exam that is why you should not play with this app all questions on the app have been carefully explained the reasons for the answers have been carefully given and that is why you must launch into this app likewise what is there to see they say there's a utme challenge every saturday to test your preparedness for the exam to see how prepared you are uh, to test yourself is a mock challenge every Saturday, and people win prizes. We share up to 43,000 Naira in prizes every challenge day, so you can get your activation feedback <laughs> through that means. Well, so the app is, uh, uh, is not free, the free version allows you to answer just five questions. After five questions, you'll be told to activate, and the activation fee is just 2,500 Naira. And in case you have trust issues that ah if i pay this money will i get activated of course you get activated just simply send your payment proof or your receipt to 0912151246 on whatsapp once you send your receipt your payment receipt right your debit alert a screenshot of your debit alert or your payment receipt to this number you'll be attended to please be patient sometimes because I may be shooting this video and I will not be on my phone. So don't think you have been scammed at all. You must definitely be attended to at least three. The, 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 the highest can be one hour and they have not been attended to. I, if in case you have not been attended to, just call the line too. It's our customer care number. Call the line so it, an agent may pick it or if you are too busy in, in the next one hour at most because we'll be in the studio studio shooting videos and you'll be able to get your activation key well that is by the way please get your app is very important it's very necessary you can also set mock exam for yourself to study you can put it in the study mode in the practice mode in the uh, mock mode right there are so many modes on the world on the app you can put it on random mode where questions from different years will be thrown at you right so the app is very flexible for you're using all right so today we're going to be quickly jumping into separation techniques and i've laid a foundation that constituents of mixtures can be separated by physical means so let's look at these separation techniques for sieving those of you that have been that, that have seen where gary is made right so you see that when that woman that woman holds one thing that looks like a basket that has small small holes inside she'll be shaking it like this so that the smaller particles will be what will be dropping in, in, inside the rubber she's shaking while the bigger plums will, what, will stay at the top of the of the 
of the i don't know what name or that thing they use in in separating it right so that is sieving that's what the woman is doing she's sieving some of you have already fried gary before me i've been where gary was fried before i've also fried small gary too so right so that is sieving sieving is used to separate what mixtures of what different particle sizes different particle particle sizes it is so what was separating what mixtures of what different particle sizes such as the mixture of what like that uh, that we're talking about just now the garretting right or mixture of what, sand and uh, stone right when you have sand and stone they are for different sizes right you can easily wash sieve what the uh the the sand out and leave the stone at the top right so that is what that is what uh, uh sieving also uh what about uh, a gary gary and uh, and sand they are different that the gary and sand are different they, they have different sizes depending on the size of the stand right so that is what sieving is used for sieving is used for to separate mixtures of different particle sizes it's used for to separate mixtures of all different particle sizes and from seeing sieving we we'll go to sublimation and when we're doing changes in matter changes matter we talked about sublimation if you have not watched that video please go and watch it every video is a precursor to this one so we are doing it step by step and episode by episode to help you in case you have not been properly taught chemistry in your secondary school right this jump class will help you and build the foundation so please do not miss any of our classes and do not watch half our videos because you will do it yourself right so sublimation we have said that when a solid can change directly to what to the gaseous state so we have solid we have liquid before we now have gas right we have solid we have liquid then we have gaseous or state isn't it now those of you that we did uh, change this matter we have other states such as what the plasma state and we have the Bose esting condensate bec these are theoretical in nature like we said in that class but these are the three what states three most recognized state of matter right so we have solid liquid and gas now a solid can change from what from the solid state directly so from solid to liquid from liquid to water to gas but the solid can change directly to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state the solid can change directly from what from the a, a substance can change direct, directly from solid state to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state and we call that a uh, process what sublimation so that is what is called. And also said that a, ga a gas, a gaseous substance can turn directly to the solid without passing through the liquid state, right? And we we'll call that process what? Deposition. If you remember in that class, we call that process deposition. De uh, deposition. So, and of course, that means that sublimation is just a word, separate what? A substance that can change directly from the solid state to the gaseous state without what? Passing through the what? The liquid state. From a mixture of its what solution so if you have a mixture of a substance that can sublime with another substance right that we can simply was sublime what that substance away from the mixture leaving the other mixture there right so there are several examples of substances that can sublime like one we have nh4cl this is what ammonium chloride ammonium chloride can sublime then we we'll talk about naphthalene naphthalene right we also talk about camphor talk about menthol talk about dry ice right dry ice right so there are so many other what a substance that can sublime but these are the major ones that at least at this stage we should be familiar with right these substances they can change from the solid state directly to the gaseous state Remember, these are in past questions, right? Which of the following is not, which of the following substances cannot sublime? So, if you know this, it will help you a long way, right? So, please take note of these substances that can sublime. So, this is what sublimation is used for. So, you can easily what sublime that substance that can what that can undergo sublimation and then leave the other what substance what in the milk in the mixture. So, you are able to what carefully what separate using sublimation. So, please take note of these substances that can sublime so we we'll go to the third one and that is magnetization magnetization is used for separating what magnetic substances from non-magnetic ones so let's say you have a bull here you let's say nails nails this is nail i don't know let's say this is nail 
and then let's say there's plastic, maybe some cut plastics, uh, cut plastics. There's a plastic, you know, like all those workmen that have different things. Like if you, you see an electrician's bag now, they'll be nailed, they'll be hammered, they'll be uh, different, different, different plastic. All those things they use in, in, in putting holes on the wall and putting inside. There'll be so many of them inside. So, but a, a workman may be just, let's say this is nails, these are nails rather, and this, these are what plastics. And then then this round one, let's say there are other, other materials. That are not magnetizable. So what the workman can easily do is to carry a piece of magnet close to this what to this bag that uh, that has what these different materials in it. So if he wants a nail, of course, you know that a nail is an iron, right? That it can magnetize. So the magnet will magnetize the nail for him, right? Then leaving these ones inside. So magnetization is used for what? For separating what magnetic substances or magnetic materials from non-magnetic ones, it's very very easy. There's no much to talk about about magnetization apart from that. So of course we have filtration. Filtration. Before I start talking about filtration, know that what that solute plus what solvent gives us what solution. I think. This will be about the first thing we're taught in chemistry, right? Right. So, so a solute will dissolve in a solvent to so give what a solution. So, what is a solvent? The solvent is like a liquid that the solute dissolves in, right? Why the sol the solute what is what dissolves in the what in the solvent to so give what a solution. So you must just note this right by the, by the wayside. So, a fit filtration is used for separating an insoluble solid and what. And a liquid, right? So when you want to separate what an insoluble what solid and a liquid, you use what filtration method. For example, let me make a good example. I don't know if any of you have, have seen that lifting tea, right? That lifting tea, right? That very, very popular lifting tea. So let's say, for example, you want to drink lifting, lifting, then you take what one of that thing and put inside your kettle to boil so that most of you will say so that the thing will come out where, where, right? That kind of thing. So once you put that lifting inside the kettle and you start boiling it. Sometimes the the uh, the bag the bag holding those particles may just burst and pour inside the kettle. So, but uh, let's, let's say for example you don't have money to what to go and get another one. What you simply do is to what is to separate all those particles from the world from the liquid, right? So you can take a filter paper, take a filter paper or a filter, a filter paper or a filter, and then you place it over a cup. Let's say this is a cup. Don't mind my drawing of a cup. I'm very, very terrible at drawing. Yes. Let's say this is a cup. Then you put your filter paper on top of it. Right? So you pour your what? Your, your, the liquid containing both the what? Both those particles and the liquid from the kettle. You pour it on top so that the liquid water will come down into the cup. Why those small, small particles will stay on top of the what? On top of the filter paper. You understand? So that is filtration. You have carried out with filtration. So what are you doing in this case? These particles that stay on top, they are called the what? The residue. Why the liquid that what that passes through the filter paper into the cup, we call the what? The filtrate. So that is what we call what filtration. We are able to what to filter what the what the insoluble solid. And in, what is an insoluble solid, by the way? An insoluble solid. Solid. You say what? You say solid that does not that that does not dissolve in water so an insoluble solid is a solid that does not what dissolve in water so of course that is what what an insoluble solid is so of course uh the particles that stay on top of the filter paper and called the residue while the one that's what goes down is called what the filtrate all right so now we're going to continue with the next separation technique and that is decantation. Decantation. Decantation also is used to what to separate an insoluble solid and a liquid by pouring the liquid off carefully using a glass rod. Using a glass rod. So when you are doing decantation, you are pouring the liquid off carefully from the mixture by what using what a glass rod. So for example, let's say you have a big car. Uh, you have a big car like this. Um, uh -huh. 
man, I don't mind my drawing. So you have a beaker like this, and then you have what an insoluble solid below. Then you have a liquid, you have liquid, clear, clear liquid at the top here from year to year, for example, where the liquid where the solid comes down, right? So you can use what decantation to separate what this uh these two mixtures using what a glass or so you can have another another beaker for example that you are separating it into right so you have your glass rod carefully placed like this and then you pour your liquid this is a liquid now let's say it has an angle like this then you pour that liquid carefully on top of all this glass rod so that it goes down gently so that liquid what comes below here right and then it is leaving your residue or what's your solid or your insoluble solid rather or your insoluble insoluble solid or your insoluble solid in the what in the beaker so you pour gently the liquid off using what a glass rod this is a glass a glass rod i used to get that so that is what uh that is what decantation is about so we now move over to the next one which is what centrifugation so we have done sieving I've done sublimation, I've done magnetization, I've done filtration, I've done decantation. Now we're going to centrifugation. Centrifugation is also used to separate an insoluble solid and a what? And a liquid by pouring the mixture in the by what? By spinning the mixture in a centrifuge. So you have a centrifuge, you have a machine that has a chamber that you pour the what? The mixture of the insoluble solid and the liquid in, and then you spin it inside that centrifuge the centrifuge the centrifuge gas spinning machine is a very simple machine it has just it has a motor it has a drive shaft and then of course it has the chamber where you pour the liquid in so it is spinning the mixture work together so of course that is what centrifugation is used for it's used for to separate an insoluble solid and a liquid by spinning the mixture in a centrifuge by spinning the mixture in a centrifuge then of course we go to evaporation to dryness so this is by far one of the simplest the easiest was separation techniques that we have because you yourself you might have done it before let's say uh you want to dry a uh, yam let's say yam peels in the village some of you do it right you do you dry yam peels after your mommy have peeled that yam and i say go and dry it outside i want to use to do amala a lobo right you must have heard that before so what you do you dry it under the sun so that what the liquid from the what from the uh, yam pills will what we evaporate to the atmosphere leaving the dried what yam pills right that is evaporation to dryness so it is what it is separation of what is to what it is to what to recover what a uh, uh, recover what a a a a, a, a solid evaporation of is to recover what is solid by exposing what the solid to the world to the atmosphere exposure to the atmosphere or by what or by or by heating he said that you heat or what you expose to the atmosphere so for example a mixture of salt salt and water a mixture of salt and water right it will dissolve isn't it but you can you can easily what recover what the salt from the water from the water so if you if you heat if you heat the water will evaporate or if you're exposed to the atmosphere for a very long time depending on the quantity of water anyway of course the water will also what evaporates leaving what the salt out so that is evaporation to dryness now we move over to crystallization crystallization is used for what to recover a pure sample of a dissolved a pure sample of what of a dissolved dissolved or what soluble solid by various means there are various means what to recover what this pure sample of what of a dissolved or what soluble solid that is what is about crystallization now we say crystallization is to recover a pure sample of a dissolved or soluble or solid from what from a solution by various means what are the various means number one by adding by adding by adding a speck a speck of the same solid to the solution but by adding a speck of the same solid to the solution that is one of the way to recover what that pure sample number two by what by using a spatula 
to what to scrape or to scratch the inside of the container holding the solution so you use what a spatula a spatula is like like a spoon to use to what to scrape what the inside of what of what the container was holding what the solution then number three by shaking by shaking or agitating the what the mixture so you shake it or you what you know what shake it. shaking something as, as agitating you shake all your you agitate what the mixture in the solution and one very unpopular method although of of what of recovering this pure sample is by what by adding a speck of dust of dust to serve to serve to serve as a nucleation site to serve as a nucleation site for the dissolved solid particles so these first three methods are actually very popular but this one is not what's very very common right so uh crystallization is used to what to to recover what dissolved solids that easily what decompose that easily decompose on heating that easily decompose on what on heating that's what the tradition is used for used to recover what a dissolved what solid uh, used to what recover dissolved solids that what easily what decompose on heating or to recover solids that easily decompose on heating and of course when we use crystallization a very pure sample a very pure sample is what we usually what get all right so now let's go to the next one and that is what precipitation precipitation is used to also what recover what an insoluble what uh uh used to separate what an insoluble solid right from its what solution by the addition of a precipitating agent by the addition of a precipitating precipitating agent so for precipitation was we use what uh, a, precipita a precipitating what agent to recover what that dissolve what uh, solid from what from the solution so unlike what uh, uh crystallization right we, we have other means of what of recovering the pure sample of what that dissolved solid or what solution so for precipitation we use what uh, we add what a precipitating agent example of a precipitating agent will be what li2 Li2 CO3. This is lithium carbonate, right? By the addition of what of a precipitating agent. So precipitation is usually used for what for what for recovering what uh, 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 so, uh, this dissolve or solid based on that what different rate of what solub solubility in what in different solvents. It is for recovering what solids based on that different what solubilities in different solvents. So we'll go to simple distillation now. And simple distillation is used to separate what uh uh used to recover what solvents or to, or to recover two miscible liquids to recover two miscible liquids, it is to recover a solvent or what two miscible what liquids whose boiling points, whose boiling points, whose boiling points differ by a great amount differ by a great amount usually what 25 degrees celsius or what or greater can be 25 degrees celsius or greater so it used to what to, to what to recover what a solvent who or what to to separate two miscible liquids who what boiling point differ by a great amount usually 25 degrees celsius or what or greater than 25 degrees celsius so when you are looking at whether it is simple distillation or fractional distillation whenever you are seeing temperature look at the temperature that you are using water to separate and of course if it is 25 degrees celsius or more than it know that simple distillation is the separation is the best suitable separation technique to what to use why Fractional distillation is also used to, work to separate two miscible liquids whose boiling points are what are close together. 
whose boiling points are close together, usually less than 25 degrees Celsius, right? So whose boiling points are, are close together. This one, boiling points BP, boiling points are close together. That is less than, this is greater than, sorry. So that is, sorry, that is less than 25 degrees Celsius. Right, but for simple distillation, greater than what is said that 25 degrees Celsius or greater than 25, 25 degrees Celsius or greater. Right, so you must take note of what those two do not get confused that they do the same thing, but of course, the, 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 the temperature is what, what differentiates them. So, if it is, it is, uh, if their boiling points are close together, less than 25 degrees Celsius, you use fractional distillation. But if their temperatures are what are at 25 degrees Celsius, is 25 degrees Celsius or greater than 25 degrees Celsius, then you use what simple distillation. We now move to chromatography. Chromatography is used to what to separate solid based on their different rates, different rate of movement along a medium such as what paper or gel so chromatography is used to work to separate solutes based on their different rate of movement along a medium such as paper or gel so based on technique based on technique we have two types of chromatography and that is what absorption absorption chromatography chromatography and two partition chromatography so based on technique we have two types of chromatography absorption chromatography and partition chromatography also we have different types of chromatography the types of chromatography we have types of chromat chromatography we have include one we have paper chromatography two we have column chromatography three we have thin layer chromatography four we have gas liquid chromatography five we have gas solid chromatography so these are the types of chromatography that we have now the constituents of what ink and chlorophyll can be separated by what chromatography ink and chlorophyll you know chlorophyll is what is the what is the uh, is the substance that what give what plants that green coloration right you know chlorophyll right it has different constituents the major constituent of chlorophyll is magnesium it has other what constituents but for ink ink has several it has lots of constituents i think that is where i'm going to base our our study of chromatography in ink and chlorophyll right so for ink ink has lots of constituents uh, chlorophyll right ink has lots of constituents such as it, it, it has constituents it has uh, alcohols in it alcohols it has solvents in it it has what uh, fluorescence it has pigments it has dyes it has um, a resins it has what else again it has a uh, lubricants it has i mentioned dyes they are even more more constituent of what ink ink, has, ink ink is made up of a lot of things right so you can separate the constituent of ink and chlorophyll using what using chromatography uh, what would have said that the major constituent of what chlorophyll is what is magnesium magnesium now the chemical formula for ink for ink ink essentially blue ink is c37 h29393 so this is what the chemical formula for what for ink right c h n o s 37 c 37 h29 n3 o 9 s 3 this is the chemical formula for ink for blue ink for blue ink please please take note and then for mag for chlorophyll i said the, the major constant was is magnesium that uh, c h o n n g 
right? This is the formula for what? For chlorophyll. And this is 655 H72. This is 5. This is 4. Like this. So this is the chemical formula for what? For chlorophyll, right? So the constituent of both ink and chlorophyll can be separated using what? Using chromatography. Now, note that what? Chromatography can also be used for, for can both be used for separating colored and colorless substances. For both colored and what? And colorless, colorless, colorless substances. Please take note. So whenever you hear about color, usually is what going to be chromatography. So for as a separation, as a separating technique. So chromatography is both used for separating colored and what and colorless substances. Then of course we we'll go to the next one. That is what separating funnel method. Separating funnel method is used for what separating two immiscible liquids. Two immiscible liquids. That is just the two liquids that cannot mix together, right? Like uh, water and oil. Right, they cannot mix together, so you use what uh, separating funnel method to do that. Why the last uh, separation technique we are discussing is recrystallization. It's used to what to to uh, to purify an impure solid sample. So if you have an impure solid sample, you use what recrystallization was to purify what it. So that is the last separation technique. We are going to what discuss and of course with this we have learned about all the separation techniques that are available and then we can we are ready we are braced up for what for the exam anywhere they set any question on what separation techniques we can use our account to simply what place it among what this word category and know the the the, the right word uh separation technique that can be used for separating what uh in that particular question they are asking you so we're going to talk about the determination of the purity of a substance quickly which is the last part of what this class determination of the purity of a substance how do we know that a substance is what is pure and uh, so there are different techniques and methods we use one is what by visual inspection by visual inspection so you have your eyes right you can see sometimes you see something that is dirty you say ah Okay, how do you know that somebody is wearing a dirty cloth? <coughs> Answer. Right? So, you only, from your eye, you saw that, ah, this, this thing is supposed to be white, but you don't turn to brown, you will dirty, it has all yeah. If you go to a mechanical shop, you see different things in that body. You know that that cloth that man is wearing is dirty. It's very, very dirty. Of course, that is the nature of his job. Uh, so I'm just trying to raise that by inspection. So you look at what the color, look at the appearance of what of the substance of interest, and you know that what this material is clean, whether it's pure or it's not what pure. So if you look at a substance by by the color, by the by the uh, by the appearance, you can know that what it is what it is pure or not, right? So that's by, by what by visual inspection. Then number two, we have what by inhalation, inhalation or olfaction right so this is what done by what by sniffing by sniffing or wafting wafting the word the substance of interest so you take all the substance of interest close to you you sniff it <sighs> ah no 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 this is done the then the spoil Right, so you have a substance. If you sniff it by the smell that comes from it, you know that what it is, what pure or not, it is getting bad or not. Right, so substances they may, they may what they may be odorless when pure, while some may have characteristic what odor. So you have to take note of what of that. Then number three, we have what uh, uh, boiling and melting points and melting points determination. So for boiling and melting point determination, is it is by far the most used right, for the determination of the purity of a substance. Pure substances have sharp melting and boiling points. Pure substances have what? Sharp melting, melting and boiling points. And boiling points. Right? Why impure substances impure substances boil at a wide range wide range of what of temperature 
right so of course pure substances have sharp you have to take note that pure substances have sharp melting and boiling points right and then impure substances may boil over a wide range of water of temperature so if a substance have a sharp melting and boiling point you can tell that what this substance is what is pure but of course if it has to start boiling over a wide range of temperature you know that what that it is impure all right, so take note of that. That is number three. Then number four, we have what we call the mixed melting point method. Number four, we have the mixed melting point method. The mixed melting point method. So in this one, you are taking a sample. So let's say this sample now is what is the impure one. And then what you take, you take a pure sample. You take a pure sample of what? That same substance of this what? This substance will want to determine whether it is pure or not. So you take this, you don't know, you don't know about this one. You don't know whether it is impure or not, right? Impure or pure. So let me put it this way. This substance will want to determine the purity. You don't know whether it is pure or impure yet. So what you do, you take a pure sample of the same substance and what? And mix them together. So if they have a sharp melting point right if they have a sharp melting point you know that what the substance is what is pure but once you mix them together and then you see that they have what and they start what having what a wide range of what temperatures then you know that what it is what it is impure so that is what called the what the mix melting point method you take a pure sample of the substance you want to determine the purity and add it to the work in the sample that you are not sure of whether it is pure or not and then you use them to know whether it is pure or impure whether if they if they have what sharp melting and boiling point how they would boil or melt over a wide temperature range so that is that for what mix melting point method the last one the last one is called refractometry refractometry in this case you are using a refractometer use a refractometer to determine the refractive and right, to determine the refractive refractive index of the substance of what interest and comparing the results comparing the results with what with literature literature values this literature values are talking about as written in the books so of course there are some books that have what that have what values for what for substances that are pure right so what you do you, you take a refractometer to determine what the refractive index of the substance of interest and then you compare the results you are having with what with the known literature values or as written down in the books interesting class you may say that is the end to this wonderful word class right on separation word techniques right so what you should do by yourself right now go to the o3 school jump app o3 schools jump app now jump app if you have not downloaded it go to play store and download it download it then look forward start on the question search feature put sieve in there if you see questions that are come out of that saving put sublimation mark that put them so that you see you see the way jump set their questions on what on separation techniques then use it to prepare for your exam please do not forget to like this video if you watch the video without liking it god will not forgive you like this video please share it to your friends to your colleagues in your lectures in your class in your groups share it share this video around and for please comment to write something good down ah thank you for this video ah thank you for this video nice video poor video write it don't put a good comment please put a good, a good comment so that's why we draw the curtain for today's class please do not uh do not do not give up on your studies keep studying keep reading we'll do our best to uh, to aid you to aid what you're learning uh to so prepare for your exam. Thanks for watching. My name remains Owolabitangod, aka MCO Blue. I'll see you in the next class.